All right, hey everybody, we're gonna look at an easy exercise that'll hopefully make us feel a little bit more comfortable with what the quotient topology is. So here's the problem. So let y just be the set one, two, and three, and assume that the real numbers has the usual topology on it. So open sets are open intervals like you're used to from college algebra, using like parentheses to indicate you've got an open interval. So unions of those are open as well. And uh, intersections of uh, finitely many of those at a time is also open. All right, so we're gonna define this function f from the real line to this set y, which is one, two, three, and it's just gonna be this piecewise function, where uh, f of x is one if x is negative, f of x is two if x is equal to zero, and f of x is three if x is positive. And what we wanna do is we wanna describe what is the quotient topology on y that's induced by this function f. So here are some facts and some theorems that we need in order to solve this problem. And really the only thing we need is what on earth does it mean to talk about the quotient topology on the codomain that's induced by this function? So in general, let me just kind of set that up here. So given a function G from a topological space A comma T, so my notation there is A is just a set and T is a topology on that set. So the domain's a topological space, but B is just a set. So I'm not claiming a priori right now that B has any topology on it at all, it's just a set. And so the idea here is we're going to define a topology on B, and this function G is going to help me define the topology on B. So the quotient topology on B induced by G is the following. So I'm going to use fancy U or script U, and it's equal to the following. So how you should read this is it's the set of all subsets regular U that are subsets of B. So I'm just saying there U is in the power set of B, so that's my fancy P for power set colon is such that, and so what does it take for regular u to be in this set? I just want to require that the pre-image of u is an open set in A. So in other words, the inverse image, if you like that uh, phrase a little bit better to describe g inverse of u there. So anyway, you're looking backwards. And so if, when you look backwards, when you look back at uh, in that domain, right, if the pre-image is open, then we're going to say that u is open in the codomain. Okie dokie. That's all we need in order to do this. So again, like I just said, we're gonna say that U is open in B if G inverse of B is open in A, or the pre-image of B is open in A if you like that too. All right, let's do this proof again. So just to remind you up here, we're going to try to just compute what is the topology that this function F induces on the set one, two, three. All right, so fortunately the set one, two, three, I can just list out all the subset of one, two, three. So let's list out the power set of Y so I get the empty set. I get each set that has one element in it, and I sometimes call those singletons. And then I get uh, the sets that contain two elements, so one, two, one, three, two, three, and then finally, what if you grabbed all three elements, then you just grabbed Y. So the power set of Y has these, uh, I think, eight elements in them, if I counted right, which of course I did. Cool, and so what are we gonna do? We're just gonna, by hand, compute what the pre-image of B is for each B in here. So for each one of those yellow sets, if you can see that color, we're just gonna look backwards and say, what real numbers map to that? And so let's do, what's the pre-image of the empty set? And that's kind of always a gimme, it's the empty set. And we're happy about that. So I'm thinking about, on the right-hand side, the empty set, thinking about it as a subset of the real line. Um, that's why I'm trying to denote it in that reddish color. But we're happy because that's an open set in R. And so since the pre-image is open in the domain R, that tells me that the yellow empty set should be in the topology. It will be in the quotient topology. So I'm going to keep track of that information with like this green open in R with a check mark next to it. Now for the rest of the things that we've got to check the pre-images of, I'm going to actually plop the uh, graph of this function, that piecewise function down right there, and I'll kind of mark on it in order to help us make sure that uh, we feel good about why am I concluding this or that is open or not. So let's think about the pre-image of one. And so what we're looking at is, you know, what X values have an output of one. And if I change colors here, let me grab a color like uh, this pink color, looks like it'll stand out. So what are the X values that uh, have an output of one? Well, it's this interval here from minus infinity until I get to zero. And uh, I see when I actually plug in zero, right, it jumps up to that point right there. So maybe in my Desmos graph here that I made, I probably should have made it have open circles there and there. If that makes you feel better, that's what I have in mind. Um, and so my point though, is that uh, if I think about, okay, there's that interval from minus infinity to zero, I'm gonna write that down now. And I know that that's a good open set on the real line. The singleton one is gonna be included in the quotient topology later on. Now we'll look at 
the pre-image of the singleton 2. And when we think about what are the real numbers that map to 2, well, it's just the real number 0 that maps to 2. And so if I write down 0, that singleton, you know, singleton is not an open set on the real line with the usual topology. So that doesn't get included. So I'll just put a big fat nope there. So 2 does not get included, just to be a little bit more clear. The singleton 2 is not going to be in the quotient topology. Let's look at the singleton 3, what's its pre-image? And that'll be from 0 to infinity. So again, just to help you out, I'm looking at here is where the output is 3. And remember, when I'm thinking about the pre-image, I'm asking, what are the inputs that have output 3? And so these are the inputs here from 0 to infinity. And uh, I'm thinking now, well, that is open on the real line. Therefore, the singleton 3 is going to be open in the quotient topology. Let's think about the pre-image of 1, 2. And what am I going to do? We're just going to throw 0 into the set from minus infinity to 0. So I just put a bracket on the end there to denote that 0 is included. But that's not an open set in the real line. So we'll just put a big fat nope. We'll think about the pre-image of 1 to 3. And what would that be? So that would just be minus infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity, where I don't include 0. And that's the union of two open sets on the real line in the usual topology. Therefore, it is also open. We'll look at the pre-image of 2, 3. And what that should do is it should just include it should just include 0 into this set right here. You probably see how that's working. But that's not open, so I won't be using 2, 3 in the quotient topology. And the last one i got to check is just what's the pre-image of y. And it's the real line itself. And that's open on the real line, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out a little bit and uh, we're just going to collect this information here. So just where did I get the green check marks at? So thus the quotient topology on y induced by f is the following. So fancy u is going to be the empty set, the singleton 1, the singleton 3, the set containing 1 and 3, and y itself.